Howdy, I'm Bob Terry, and get ready for another action-packed, stunt-filled episode of The Range Rider, starring Jock Mahoney and Dickie Jones. These two are just amazing horsemen, amazing stuntmen. They did all their own stunts. They did all their own horse work. These guys are just simply amazing to watch. Appreciate you coming by here. Have fun watching this, and we'll see you after the show. And who could be more at home on the range than the Range Rider? With his thrilling adventures of the great outdoors, his exciting experiences rivaling those of Davy Crockett, Daniel Boone, Buffalo Bill, and other pioneers of this wonderful country of ours. And Dick West, All-American Boy. Dickie boy, there's a town we've been heading for. Looks awful quiet to me. If you're talking about law and order, it is. Sheriff Walsh is the only citizen that can get away with robbing the people. I thought you said the sheriff was a friend of yours. Well, he is. But he hasn't done any sheriffing in so long that he's taken money under false pretense. Well, there's no law against being quiet, but this is ridiculous. It looks like a ghost town. Well, that was no ghost. Let's go. I heard the shots, ma'am. What happened? My father's dead. I was in the house. My father was just coming home when a man rode up, shot him, and rode off. Do you know who he was? I suppose the same man who killed all the others. What others? You mean you don't know what's going on around this part of the country? We just got here, ma'am. You know where he went? He disappeared up into those hills. Well, we'll track him down. I hope you do. What'd you find? Just call me a dummy. Why? Well, after all this tracking and trailing I've done with you, I can't find hiding a hair of this guy. His trail just ups and disappears. Well, I wouldn't feel too badly if I were you. I couldn't find hiding or hair of him either. He's just a mighty smart killer. Well, how are we gonna find him? We don't even know what he looks like. Well, the only thing we can do is go to town and start at the beginning. Now? Right now. Let's go. I tell you, Judge Danny is one of the finest citizens this town ever had. I agree with you, Ed, but... Oh, but nothing. Why aren't you out running down the man who did it? I wish I could. Oh, we should be hanged. As head of the Citizens Committee, I demand action. Or we'll find ourselves a new sheriff. In that case, maybe you'd better do just that. Yes, I guess we'd better. If you can't handle the job, I'll handle it for you. I wouldn't bet on that if I were you. Who are you? Range Rider. Hello, Jim. Boy, am I glad to see you. Likewise. I'd like to have you meet my sidekick, Dick West. Let know you, son. Howdy, Sheriff. I'm Ed Finley. How do you do? Uh, these are the two men I was telling you about, Sheriff. They took out after the man who killed my father. Oh, 
Sorry to report we lost him. Well, in that case, what I said before still goes. Either you produce the killer in 48 hours, or out you go. If there's anything I like, it's a good sporting chance. Fill in the details for us, Jim. Maybe we can be of some help. Believe me, I need all the help I can get. Suppose you start at the beginning. Suppose I do. So far, four people in this town have been killed with apparently no motive in any instance. No one's been able to identify the killer because no one's seen him. That is, except Irene here. She claims to have gotten at least a quick look at him. Can you give us a description of him, miss? Well, not very well, I'm afraid. He was wearing a mask. Do you remember how tall he was? Well, about... About my height? No. No, about your height. Was he thinner or heavier than I am? Just about the same. Might have a borrow a piece of charcoal, Jim? Sure thing. Thanks. Can you give me a description of clothes he was wearing as to color? Uh, black trousers. Black trousers. And? An open shirt and a black vest. Now, as to his physical attributes, any, anything else for a description, facial features, just anything? No. No, I can't seem to remember anything else. I hate to say this, Range Rider, but I'm afraid nobody's going to be able to identify the killer from that. Well, we might be able to, Sheriff, when it's finished. You see, with Miss Danning's help, Dickie and I are going to try and reconstruct a life-size model of the killer. You're going to do what? Well, when it's all finished, maybe you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Dick, go across the street to the store. Get one of their life-size dummies out of the window. They'll let you borrow it. Bring it back over here. While you're gone, I'll get the rest of the things. Right. Well, Sheriff, how do you think he looks? Wait a minute. What's the matter? No. no. It couldn't be. Couldn't be what? Well, if I didn't know Dan Gannon was dead, I'd swear that dummy looked a little like him. Oh, well. This will have to do for now. Well, at least it'll give the townspeople an idea of what to look for. What I want to know is, where are we putting? We ought to put him someplace where everybody can see him. But that ain't what bothers me most. What bothers me most is, what do we do now? Now we'll find the identity of the killer. Oh, sure. And just exactly how do you aim on doing that? By finding the motives behind the killings. I told you, Range Rider, there ain't none. This maniac just ups and kills him. Well, Sheriff, you know and I know that a man just doesn't run around killing people with no motive. I repeat, how do you aim to find these motives you've been talking about? Well, Miss Danning was a great help. And I think that if Dickie and I went out and talked to the families of the men that have been killed, we'd probably learn a lot more. When we're all through, we'll come back and check with you. Hey, that's an idea. And good luck, boys. Thank you, sir. And I'll see you later, pal. Behind bars. All I remember is that Jeff and I were riding along in the buckboard when a man rode up alongside us and... 
Well, the next thing I knew, Jeff was dead. Do you remember anything distinctive about the man? Well, he wore uh, black trousers and a black vest. He had a mask on. I, I couldn't tell what he looked like. What about his horse? A bay. A black tail and mane. Well, thank you very much, ma'am. Oh, not at all. And if there's anything else I can do, please let me know. You bet we will. Well, tell us, son, did you get a very good look at the man that shot your father? No, not a very good one. I only saw the back of him. He jumped out the window in the front room. Do you think you'd recognize him if you saw him from the back again? I don't know. The only thing I can remember is he was carrying his gun in his left hand. Well, thanks a lot, son. Keep your chin up. Miss Rawlins, think very carefully before you answer the next question. Did your husband have any enemies? No, at least none that I know of. Well, did anyone ever threaten his life? I said before, as far as I know, Tom didn't have an enemy in the world. Well, by golly, he must have had one or he wouldn't have been murdered. Miss Rawlins, let's start at the beginning. There must be somebody, something... Wait a minute. My husband was on a jury once. The jury that convicted Dan Gannon. It could be it, Dick. Thank you very much. Let's go back to town and check with the sheriff. Uh, Who shot you? Rode, rode up close, took off, off mask. Dan. Was it Dan Gannon? Yes. Uh, oh. Well, that cinches it, Dick. Let's take him into town. Well, that finishes him, Dick. Well, except for one thing. What's that? This new poster. Well, what'd you two find out? Anything? The name of the killer. The what? That's right, Dan Gannon. Remember you said the dummy looked like him. You two are out of your mind. Dan Gannon's dead. You're sure? Of course I'm sure. Died at the end of a rope. All nice and legal-like. You want proof? Here it is. Can I look at it? Here it is. Whatever gave you the idea that Gannon is a killer, anyway? There's a man killed today by the name of John Walton. Before he died, he said the man that had killed him was Dan Gannon. Are you sure he said Dan Gannon? I'm positive. Where'd you take his body? Or at the coroner's office. I'd better have a look at it. Dick, you go over with the sheriff. I want to stay here and read these court reports. Right. Come on. I tell you, this ain't no good. Nothing ain't no good. I'm turning in my badge. Pin it back on, Jim. I think I've got this thing figured out. You have? What's this I hear about John Walton being killed? I'm afraid you're here right, Mr. Finry. Well, that settles it. As head of the Citizens Committee, I'm taking over. I'm going to personally organize a search for this man. Well, I wouldn't worry about finding him if I were you, Mr. Finley, because if I'm not mistaken, he's looking for you right now. What do you mean by that? It's all very simple. It's right here in the court report. Judge Danning, Brant, Hawkins, Raleigh, and now Walt, they're all dead. And they all helped convict Dan Gannon. So what? You were the foreman on a jury. Oh. Well, you've got to protect me. You understand? You've got to protect me. Kind of sudden I changed the tune, haven't you, Mr. Finley? Well, it, it's different now. I... 
You've got to protect me from him. That's only a dummy. Oh, forget the dummy. Call out a posse. Get some extra help. I want protection. We'll protect you, Mr. Finley. How about the others, Range Rider? There were more men on that jury. Well, there were eight men on the jury, not counting the judge. Well, up to this point, four have been killed. Well, where are the other four? Well, let's see. Two don't live here anymore. That leaves Joe Benson, the barber across the street, and uh, Mr. Finley here. You've got to protect me. I said we'd protect you, Mr. Finley. Uh, yes, but how? Well, Dickie and I will change places with you and the barber across the street. <laughs> Yes, sir. Step right in. You're next. Where's Joe? Uh, Joe's sick. I'm taking his place. Um, what'll it be? Just a haircut. Make dang sure it's even. A haircut? Uh, how about a shampoo instead? Just a haircut. A massage? Just a haircut. Yes, sir. How do I know you can handle this killer? You don't. You want to try? Nah. Try. I want a protection. I'm going to call the sheriff. Operator, get me the sheriff. Do you think I'm going to be the next victim? You're sadly mistaken. Hello, operator. Hello? Oh, it's you, Finley. But well, I can't come over to your house. Of course not. You just stay there and do like you're told. Stay alive. Go back to your room. Relax. You're so nervous, you're liable to shoot yourself. Right. All right. Nice head of hair you have, mister. Yeah, I'm mighty proud of it. Nice and easy. Feel a draft? Getting cold in here. I'm hot. Mr. You're all through. How much I owe you? 25 cents. Here you are. Mm. where you are, Finley. I've been expecting you, Gannon. You're late. So, you figured it out. Well, except one thing. How can you be Gannon if Gannon's dead? 
Did you ever hear of twin brothers? So that's it. Yeah, that's it. Too bad you won't be around to tell anybody about it. What makes you think so? This gun in my hand, for one thing. How long do you think you can run around the country killing people before the law catches up with you? After you, there's just one more. Then I don't care what happens. Right now, we're wasting time. Get ready to die, Finley. This is it. Well, if you kill me, Gannon, you're not killing Finley. You're killing a range rider. A range rider? Uh, don't leave me, range rider. Well, let's go. Don't leave me. This man will kill me. Don't leave me. This man is going to kill anybody. Uh. Drop that gun. I said drop the gun. What are you waiting for, Gannon? Go ahead, get it over with. I'm enjoying this. I wish I could say the same thing. So you're the range rider I've heard so much about. Got quite a reputation yourself. It's gonna be even better before too long. Too bad you won't be around to hear about it. Like I said before, go ahead, get it over with. That's just what I'm planning to do right now. Mister, if you know any prayers, you better start saying them. Because in just about 10 seconds, this gun's gonna be the last thing you hear. I wonder how tough you'd be without that gun. You've got just five seconds left. Well, I'm not gonna die with my hat on. This way, sir. What was that? <laughs> for wear, but I'm all right. There's your killer, Sheriff, Dan Gannon's twin. So that's who it was. This was his way of getting revenge for hanging his twin brother. <laughs> he sure don't look like a killer now. Yeah, but you should have seen him a couple minutes ago. I'll bet. Well, let's get him back to town. Come on, wake up. Well, Jim, the next time we meet, I hope it's under pleasanter circumstances. I'll second that. Well, by the way, wait a minute. What do I do with this? Let me have it. What do you want it for? Well, here, I'll show you. Here. Well, I still don't see what you're trying to prove. Well, the next time you call me dummy, I'll just say, which one? Oh, this is the end. So long, Jim. So long, boys. <laughs>
really hope you enjoyed The Range Riders, starring Jock Mahoney and Dick Jones. And remember, it's brought to you free here on the internet by Wild West Toys. And you can shop with Wild West Toys at www.toyguntown.com. And if you're not already on the Westerns on the Web website, come on by and see us at westernsontheweb.com. Hundreds of free, family-friendly Western TV shows and movies. And also, I'd like to add this. Dick Jones is in this. Dick Jones was all over Hollywood back in the heyday of Hollywood. He was in movies with James Stewart, with Errol Flynn, with Randolph Scott, John Wayne. Dick Jones was everywhere, all over the place when he was a boy in Hollywood. And he was a fantastic stuntman in this show you watch, a fantastic horseman. And Dick Jones is one of the nicest folks you'll ever meet. If he's ever at a festival that you have a way to go to, go and meet Dick Jones. It's worth the trip. Thanks again. I'm Bob Terry. Appreciate you joining us. We hope to see you get on down the trail. Y'all have a great day. Howdy, I'm Bob Terry, and get ready for another action-packed, stunt-filled episode of The Range Rider, starring Jock Mahoney and Dickie Jones. These two are just amazing horsemen, amazing stuntmen. They did all their own stunts. They did all their own horse work. These guys are just simply amazing to watch. Appreciate you coming by here. Have fun watching this, and we'll see you after the show. could be more at home on the range than the Range Rider, with his thrilling adventures of the great outdoors, his exciting experiences rivaling those of Davy Crockett, Daniel Boone, Buffalo Bill, and other pioneers of this wonderful country of ours, and Dick West, All-American Boy. girlfriend. Oh, now you know I don't like girls. Good morning, Sparkling Brook. Been shopping? Calico for a new dress. I'll bet that new dress is for the trading post dance on the 4th of July. For the dance. Young lady, as Indian agent representing the United States government, I demand to inspect that calico to make sure I approve of the color. Very nice. We, the United States government, approve. Furthermore, sparkling book, we officially give our opinion that you'll be the best dressed girl at the dance. Thank you, Mr. United States government. I mean, thank you, Mr. Range Rider. <clears throat> oh, sparkling brook, my young friend would like to ask you a question. Yeah, that's right. Um, hello, sparkling brook. Um, how, uh, how are you? Um, uh, how about you and I, um, you know the, well, what he wants to ask you is if he may take you to the dance. That's right. He wants to know if he can... Um, I want to know if I... Well, you and I... The dance. Will you? Well, the United States government advises against it. We must officially caution you that he dances like a... Um, buffalo in a tee shot? No! I'm a good dancer. I'll show you. May I? One. Two, three. <laughs> 
Too. Was I that bad that she had to jump on her horse and head for the hills? It had nothing to do with you. It was something else. Well, what's the trouble? Smoke signals. Looks like the Wachukas are getting up a war party. Ready to go? Let's go. Three times Young Eagle has spoken. And three times the white man does not heed the warning of the Wachuca. We tried to tell you that we... The Wachuca will listen to no more of the white man's talk. The white man speaks with two faces. What do you intend to do with this? You shall both run behind that wagon until you drop. Now... And when you drop, you will be dragged. Now, 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 now you wait a minute. I, I'm from the United States government. The, 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 the law is on my side. The United States law, the white man's law. You bet it is. And they'll send a troop of cavalry in here and wipe out the whole Wachuca tribe. The white man speaks with big words. Let us see if he can die with the same bigness. The Ayapu! Saved our lives. How do I say thanks? No need to thank me. It's part of my job. I'm the Indian agent for this reservation. Yeah, and I'm his pal. You don't have to thank me either. You must be the range rider. That's right. I'm Frank L. Sieber, U.S. Department of Survey. Mr. Gerd here is from an eastern mining syndicate. They found a huge ore deposit in Arrowhead Rocks. Gold? No, copper. You better tell him, Mr. Gerd. I believe there's more copper right here in our head rocks than was ever taken from the Copper Queen mine in Bisbee. My company plans to pit mine it. That is, if we can ever talk sense into these Indians. It just so happens that Arrowhead Rocks belongs to the tribe of the Huachucas. Since when is it legal for a private mining concern to come in and pit mine on an Indian reservation? Well, it uh, might be better to show you. If you'll meet me up at the boundary marker at Arrowhead Rocks this afternoon, I'll get my equipment and point it out to you. Can you drive all right? I think we can both make it. All right. Good luck. Come on, Edward. Now, don't touch this. Take a look for yourself. Now, as you can see, the boundary cuts right from this marker right up to the butte. Now, this leaves Arrowhead Rocks on the outside of the reservation and not on the inside. Of course, you understand I've only held this job for two weeks, replacing the last Indian agent. But I was under the impression that Arrowhead Rocks were inside of the reservation. Well, you were sure under the wrong impression, and so were these Indians. Frank L. Sieber, isn't that your name? I made the original survey five years ago. And at Mr. Gerd's request, the government sent me out here to recheck my boundaries to see if he has a legal right to start a pit mining operation. And I do have that legal right. My company plans pit mining Arrowhead Rocks in spite of these Indians. Mr. Gerd's company wants to be fair about this. If Arrowhead Rocks had been on the reservation instead of where they are, he was willing to give the Indians 50% of the stock. But they're not inside the reservation. Even as it is. He's willing to help the Indians out. He wants to give them 5% of the net profit from the operation if they'll just leave him alone. Well, that sounds fair enough. Not for them, it doesn't. They don't want any money. They just want to keep us out of Arrowhead Rocks. Why? You tell me why. You're the Indian agent around here. Now, what are you going to do about it? We'd better do something and do it quick. Those smoke signals you saw this morning mean the Chief Young Eagle's about to go on the warpath. 
The last time the Wachuca tribe went on a war path, they killed five settlers and wiped out a whole troop of cavalry from Port Cook. Hey, we better get going. We'll see you later. Young Eagle, we come to you under a flag of truce as your friends. The Wachuca no longer makes friends with white men. The Wachuca is now at war. Young Eagle must help us stop this war. You were once my friend. I will spare your life if you go at once. Go. First, I must talk to Nantana, the wise old owl of the Wachukas. Take me to your medicine man. No. As once your friend, take me to Nantana. Give me this chance. There's a chance I give you, a chance to fight Young Eagle, who was once your friend and now your enemy. Do not interfere. This is just between the two of us, Dick. Stay out of it. Go! You have won fairly. Kill me. No. You spare my life that I may forever live in dishonor? I spare your life that forever you may be chief of the Wachukas. Is it your wish that your enemies shall live? It's my wish that my friends shall live. Now take me to your medicine man so we can stop this war. So it will be. <laughs> Oh, sorry, tell him I don't smoke. But you have to. This is a pipe of peace. We're trying to stop a war. Look, for two years you told me if you caught me smoking, you'd knock my ears off. And now if I don't smoke, I'll start a war. Smoke. <laughs> the place called Arrowhead Rocks belongs to the white man's mind, not the Indian. But the white man is willing to pay the tribe much money. At the end, it'll let him mine the copper in peace. What you guys want, not money. Only want white man stay away from Arrowhead Rocks. Why? That is secret known only to what you guys. Well, maybe if you could tell me the secret, I could help avert a war. No. Nantana, you are the medicine man of the Wachukas. You are called the wise old owl. I need your help. This secret known only to tribe. But if Range Rider should become member of tribe, we could then tell him. I'd be very proud to become the blood brother of the Wachukas. As a Wachuka, if you ever betray this secret, you shall die in the dust, dragged to death behind our horses. I would be proud to become the blood brother of Young Eagle. It's okay with me, too. Oh, now, wait a minute. If I'm the blood brother to Young Eagle, then that makes his sister Sparkling Brook my sister. And who wants to take his sister to a dance? This is a sacred ceremony, Dick. No witnesses. Go water the horses or something. 
Okay, in other words, go jump in the lake. Right. Sparkling Brook. I mean, how? You must go away at once. But you haven't answered me. I mean, about the dance. There can be no dance when the Wachuca is at war. But the Range Rider's in a powwow with Young Eagle and the Medicine Man now. It's just about settled. So how about the dance? Well, you must ask Chief Young Eagle, who is my brother. May I ride your horse? Sure. was a runaway. He could have busted your neck. Now we play one more game, huh? You run away on that horse, and I catch you. Ha, ha. Now it is done. Range Rider is blood brother of Young Eagle. Any secret of Wachukas is also secret of Range Rider. You will tell me the secret of Arrowhead Rocks. On my word of honor, as blood brother to Young Eagle, that secret will be kept. Great Chief Coloradus, father of Young Eagle is sacred memory to our tribe. Now Great Chief lie buried in secret place. That place, Arrowhead Rock. And the white man's pit mining would turn the mountain of Arrowhead Rocks into a great crater in the ground, thus disturbing the sacred grave of Coloradus. The Wachukas could not allow this. Wachukas want not white man's copper, not his silver, not his gold. Tell the white man he must go away from Arrowhead Rocks. But I can't. The law's on the white man's side. Then my brother fails us. To prevent a war, we must secretly move the grave of Colorados back to the reservation. No, not even Wachuca himself can disturb grave. If I am to help you, you must help me. Blood brother of young eagle still talk like white man. Him talk with two faces. Seize him! <laughs> Like Mrs. Crawley left a lamp in the window. I hope she left some supper on the stove because I'm hungry. Mail, but it's not Tuesday. It's for you. As government Indian agent, you must call upon the U.S. Cavalry to enforce the legal rights of Edwin Gerd. Signed, Frank L. Sieber, U.S. Department of Survey. Yeah, that's the man we met with, Gerd. How good is your memory, Dick? Oh, pretty good. How was Sieber spelled on that government marker this morning? S-I-E-B-E-R. That's right. But here it's spelled S-E-I-B-E-R. Now, does the man forget how to spell his last name? You mean someone else wrote that note other than the man we met? Either that, Dick, or the man we met this morning isn't the real Frank L. Sieber. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to send a telegram to Washington. Well, wait for me. You've got to stay here. You're hungry, remember? Oh, yeah. I'll see you later. What's the matter? You must ride with me at once before the Wachuca warriors burn down this post. Burn down the post? There is something I want you to see. Hurry. Okay. Hmm. 
You tell me at the lake, this is what makes war between the Huachuca and the white man. Because this board stands here. Well, it's a surveyor's marker. But why is it now here? Only seven suns ago, it, it stands on the hill. And there was peace. And the two white men come and move it down here. And now there is war. Seven days ago? Well, that, that marker was supposed to have been placed there five years ago. You mean someone moved it? I saw them from the trees on the hill. You're right. Look, grass and weeds bent down and crushed under this rock. Not five years dead, just seven days dead. Alden, you're covered, kid. So are your horses. Unbuckle your gun belt and throw it over here. Come on, hurry it up. Why didn't we bushwhack them? I want to find out who else knows what they know. And now we do it the hard way. That shouldn't be too difficult. No cartridge belt, no horses. He shot three shots out of that gun. That leaves him three more. Yeah, unless he had some extra ones in his pocket. I know a way to find out. I still bet he's only got three left. I leaves him two. Gather up some of those branches and leaves there and build a smoke fire for a signal. It's a young eagle at Moon Lake. Fired pretty quick. Those smoke signals aren't going to do us any good. Let's spread out. Dan, that's his last one. We're out. Maybe I can bluff him. I got two spares. Anybody want to prove it? Just come ahead. Gun. You didn't get here a minute too soon. 
What did you find out from Washington about Mr. Frank L. Sieber? He died six months ago. You better learn how to spell, Mr. Sieber. Did you know they moved the boundary marker? Well, the original survey from Washington shows the Arrowhead rocks are well inside of the reservation, not outside. These two smart boys are going to try and pull a land grab. Chief Young Eagle's going to be mighty glad that you shot him. I didn't. They shot each other. <laughs> Oh, wait, Young Eagle. You're making a mistake. Let me explain. Wait, Young Eagle. Stop! Stop! Young Eagle, you do not know what you do. Now the Wachuca wars against his friends. The land known as Arrowhead Rocks now again belongs to the tribe of the Wachuca. Never again will white man disturb it by digging for copper. Young Eagle, I'd like to take your sister to the dance at the post on the 4th of July. So it will be. Hey, wait a minute, Dick. What for? Her brother just said it was okay, didn't he? Yes, but now that I am the blood brother of Chief Young Eagle, Sparkling Brook is also my sister. Okay. May I take your sister to the dance? Yep. But you better have her home by 9 o'clock or I'll take a belt to you. I'm not going to like this. Too many relatives. <laughs> <laughs> enjoyed The Range Riders, starring Jock Mahoney and Dick Jones. And remember, it's brought to you free here on the internet by Wild West Toys. And you can shop with Wild West Toys at www.toyguntown.com. And if you're not already on the Westerns on the Web website, come on by and see us at westernsontheweb.com. Hundreds of free, family-friendly Western TV shows and movies. And also, I'd like to add this. Dick Jones is in this. Dick Jones was all over Hollywood back in the heyday of Hollywood. He was in movies with James Stewart, with Errol Flynn, with Randolph Scott, John Wayne. Dick Jones was everywhere, all over the place when he was a boy in Hollywood. And he was a fantastic stuntman in this show you watch, a fantastic horseman. And Dick Jones is one of the nicest folks you'll ever meet. If he's ever at a festival that you have a way to go to, go and meet Dick Jones. It's worth the trip. Thanks again. I'm Bob Terry. Appreciate you joining us. We hope to see you get on down the trail. Y'all have a great day.